Have you ever heard of a man called Vincent Gallo? Have you ever heard of a movie called Buffalo 66? In this video, I'm going to go over Buffalo 66 and the man behind this rather interesting film. Buffalo 66 was released on June 26, 1998 and was initially liked by viewers with people thinking it was self-indulgent yet intriguing and even Roger Ebert thinking it was half-baked visuals put together yet deep and urgent and Elvis Mitchell saying the film was touching but this movie got a lot of attention for being brave and more controversial than most mainstream movies then Yet the production of the movie is controversial itself, considering Vincent Gallo was reportedly extremely hard to work with and the fact he didn't he did not get along with Christina Ritchie, who at the time was 17, 18, and had just moved away from acting in PG movies. Vincent Gallo, after the film's release, would make statements about Christina Ritchie, calling her a puppet because she would do whatever she would be told to do and that she was fat and Christina Ritchie made it clear she would never work with Vincent Gallo again along with the other actors and actresses. The film is shot on Rivers on stock to give it a vintage look to old NFL reels shot in the 60s and was directed by Vincent Gallo himself after firing the last director Monty Hellman over disagreements and Vincent Gallo scored the music himself and even wrote the script. All forgotten yesterday's school day. But that begs the question what is this film about? Well, let's start with the title. Why is it called, why is it called Buffalo 66? It is merely a reference to the Buffalo Bills now lost to the New York Giants in the 1999 Super Bowl game decided by a missed field goal. Now, I'm no football fan, but that's what I was able that's what I was able to find out. And yes, that will be a plot point later in the film. Buffalo 66 starts off with Billy, who just got out of prison seeking revenge on the kicker who lost the Buffalo game because of a reckless bet he made. He was forced to confess to a crime he didn't commit and now preparing to meet with his parents who didn't know he ended up in prison. But on the way he kidnaps a girl named Layla played by Christina Ritchie. Billy forces her to pretend to be his wife and gives her the name Wendy Balsam. When they meet Billy's parents Layla sees that the relationship between them is very dysfunctional and sees Billy's own mother forgetting he has a chocolate allergy and his father behaves inappropriately towards her. She learns that Billy's mother has never missed a Buffalo game except in 1966 on the day Billy was born. New York. 30 years I haven't missed a game. I haven't won a championship since 1966, and I missed that game because that's the day I had Billy. Oh, I wish I never had him. I wouldn't miss that game. Billy's mom makes a comment towards him and Layla about how he used to be a beautiful baby and continues to say, Now look at him. Which is something Vincent Gallo's real mom said to him at the age of 12, the day of his birthday. My son used to be a beautiful baby. Oh, you should have seen him. He was so beautiful. Look at him now. Oh, no. I think Billy is the most handsome guy in the whole world. The parents are based a lot of on Vincent Gallo's real life parents. And the house that the parents' scenes are filmed in is Vincent Gallo's real-life childhood house. Ange Angelica Houston, as you might know as Morticia, plays Billy's mom. And she and the dad are clearly absent, as stated earlier, with the mother obsessed with football and Billy's dad acting inappropriate towards Layla. 
As they, as they leave the house, Billy scolds Leela for telling an obvious lie to his father, and then decide to go bowling. There, Billy shows off his expertise at the sport, and Leela performs a tap dance routine to King, King Crimson's Moonchild. The two use a photo booth to take photos, spanning time, which Billy intends to send to his parents once a year. But Billy becomes annoyed when Layla makes silly faces during the photos, in contrast to Billy's straight face. What are you doing? What? Don't touch me. All right, don't touch me. What do you me. mean, don't touch don't me? You're supposed to be me. husband and wife. I'm just trying to make We're the couple good. that doesn't touch one another. We like each other. We like each other a lot, and we span time together. We just don't touch each other, all right? Now let's span time. Let's use a different color in the bag. The tap dancing and photo booth scenes are the two most talked about scenes in the, in the movie. Me personally, I don't know what the interpretation of the dancing scene is, or if it even means anything, and it's just Christina showing her tap dancing skills being put to use. But the photo booth scene is what salts everyone in this movie because of the back and forth between Billy and Layla, and the way the whole frame is shot making it look like a Polaroid reel. The scene is considered iconic for those reasons and is even used as the poster. After bowling, Billy and Layla visit a diner, where Billy encounters the real Wendy Balsam, a woman he used to have a crush on in middle school, who is now happily in a relationship with another man. Billy leaves Layla alone in the diner after a brief argument, but regretting his outburst, returns and apologizes to her. Billy and Layla check into a motel, where Billy and Layla have a deep conversation, eventually admit that they have fallen in love with each other, and they both go to sleep. A few hours after midnight, he is about to leave to exact his revenge on Wood, when Layla awakens, despite Layla's doubts that he will return in proclamation of her love for him. He leaves, lying to her that he will return in a few minutes with hot chocolate for her. Shortly after leaving Layla at the motel, Billy finds Scott Wood, now the owner of a topless bar. At Wood's own bar, he walks over to the Wood's table and shoots him in the head before shooting himself. His parents are then shown sitting by his side. Excuse me. His parents are then shown sitting by his grave, with his mother showing more interest in a buffalo game on the radio than in her own son's death. However, this is all shown to be inside of Billy's mind. Billy leaves the bar without killing Wood, realizing that in Layla, he has finally found a person who truly loves him. After making amends with his friend the goon on payphone, Bil Billy elegantly buys Layla her chocolate, her hot chocolate, and with a heart-shaped cookie, and buys another for a man sitting nearby who tells him he has a girlfriend. Before returning to Layla at the motel, the ending scene is Billy doing a full turnaround of his character, trying to be nice and polite and buying cookies for Layla. Personally, I can see why this film gained the recognition, respect, and attention it got, because it deserves it, and it certainly isn't like most mainstream films and feels very different. While the acting is pretty alright for the film, it appears Vincent Gallo was more interested in the visual media, which is pretty notable as the film looks visually stunning in terms of cinematography and shots. The ending effect of the slow-mo kill and suicide looks pretty well done too, and definitely deserves its praise. And while the film seems to be about the kidnapping and crime, it's mostly about how trauma and insecurity can daunt on the person, and become their whole life goal and personality in, in personality in this sense with Billy. My only gripe is that we don't really get to see Layla's life at all, or what her motivations are or was. We don't get to see how her life has had her led up to this moment to where she falls in love with her kidnapper. And it's unbelievable it's unbelievably ridiculous. But we go along with it because the dynamic of the bickering leaves us curious to keep watching. Billy comes off as a hardened asshole, but Layla breaks the barriers to Billy, and what we see is a really insecure, confused man who doesn't seem to know what he wants or why he does the things he does. 
But given approval and warmth from Layla, he ditches all of his revenge to stay with her because he realizes he can give up suicide for something even better. Buffalo 66 is a beautiful mess of a film down to its production and distribution. But let's talk about the man responsible for the film, who we've been talking about in brief segments, no other than Vincent Gallen, who to me comes off as awkward, yet an out there guy who many might describe as self-indulgent and an asshole. Vincent Gallo, born on April 11, 1966, started off as a Formula 2 motorcycle racer till he moved on to make art and music, and he was pretty successful till he later found small roles in The Equalizer and Goodfellas, later on to write Buffalo 66. Vincent Gallo also used to criticize film reviewers for their laziness in critiquing movies, simply stating that anything that they saw as progressive like, for example, a gay character, etc. If you go to Sundance and you make a film and it has a homosexual character in it, you're immediately embraced as being uh, innovative or uh, progressive in some sort of way. The most mainstream movie that I saw at Sundance was The Opposite of Sex, which is, yes. uh, I mean, it's, it's a TV movie. I'd like to also add that he has a website where he saw his own comedy. Yep. And the description he has for every tab or intention unintentionally funny and kind of petty. And please don't sue me, Vincent. He also claimed to the story a young Ice T in his hip hop and rap days as Prince Vince. My name's Prince Vince. Let me ask you something. Who's the freshest DJ MC crew around? Ah, uh, you know who. Psst, come on. Who? Jam Master J. Run DMC. Whoa. Vincent Gallo is a, pecu a peculiar human being, and from what I've seen, can only be found through NPC encounters. But after all, this Vincent Gallo and the legacy of Buffalo 66 will always be remembered as one of the best indie films of all time. And making this video has certainly made me more appreciative of the film, whether or not I fully understand his message of the film through his form of presentation. But this makes me wonder. What other films has Vincent Gallo released worldwide? I mean, if Buffalo 66 has this kind of legacy, what else can he cook? Was in my record collection. And your sneakers meant more to you than anything? Cleaning your sneakers was a daily task. It was like uh, brushing your teeth. I remember the first time I heard The Mexican by Babe Ruth. That album was in my record collection. And to be in New York and hear it spun in a dance club with Puerto Rican and black kids sort of dancing brilliantly to it. Because that whole album is sort of a heavy rock record. And then all of a sudden, that same song is interpreted as a dance song. It blew my mind. So much of it... Uh, pivoted on on sports aesthetics. 